All right, in finishing up unit four, we are looking at inequalities of both polynomial and rational functions. So we've done this before when we were working with quadratic functions, which is a polynomial, and we were looking on the graph um, to see where the function is greater than or less than um, zero. So remember, f of x is just our y values. So where are our y values greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, zero? And if we think about on our graphs of functions, the y values are greater than zero above the x-axis. So um, looking at where the graph crosses the x-axis can provide us with some important information. So with a regular polynomial function, um, polynomials always have a domain, and again, we need to look at the domain, and polynomials always have the domain of all real numbers. So if the function is a polynomial, just a reminder that the domain is all real numbers. If the function is a rational function, we need to look for the restrictions. And those can be found in the denominator, so anything that would make the denominator equal to zero is uh, one of the restrictions. So in the last section, we spent a lot of time looking for vertical and horizontal asymptotes and x and y intercepts. Um, we need to find some of those pieces, but not all of them. So we're looking for our restrictions um, for our domain, and those would provide us with vertical asymptotes, and we'll need to identify those but we also need to find the zeros or the x-intercepts. And remember, if this is a rational function, those can be found in the numerator. So the zeros in the numerator. Okay. So now um, we'll take those zeros from the denominator denominator, and zeros from the numerator, and we will put those on the number line and just determine in each region whether the y values are positive and negative. So looking at example one. In example one, I have a, I'm trying to make it a little bigger, there we go. I have a polynomial function and it says our function, we're looking for numbers greater than zero. So the y value is greater than zero. So first of all, identifying the domain, my domain is all real numbers because it is a polynomial. If I look for my x-intercepts, um, I have x-intercepts at x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. All right, so on my number line over here, I'm going to put... Uh, point at negative 2 and a point at 5 and then we're going to look at each of these regions individually these are x-intercepts look at the regions individually to determine if they're positive or negative okay so I'm gonna expand this just so you follow a little bit of what I'm doing with my positives and negatives so this function can be written as x minus 5 since it's squared, I have two factors of x minus 5 and then a factor of x plus 2. Now I'm looking for a number that's less than negative 2, and I will try, let's do negative 4. So at x equals negative 4, I'm going to plug that in for x in my function and the factors. So negative 4 minus 5, that gives me negative 9, that's negative. Same thing for this one, that's negative. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative. 
So in this region, I have three negatives. Um, that's an odd number of negatives, so this is negative. Now I'm gonna pick a number between negative two and five. So at x equals zero. Zero minus five is negative. Zero minus five is negative again, and zero plus two is positive. Now because I have two negatives, um, that's an even number of neg negatives, so those values are going to be positive. So I'll put a positive there. Now I need a number bigger than 5. Let's do at x equals 6. Plug 6 in, I get 6 minus 5 is positive, so I have two positives here. Positive, positive, and 6 plus 2 is positive, so this is positive in this area. All right, so what are we looking for? We are looking for the y values that are greater than zero, which are positive values, and it does not equal zero. So I can, when I'm creating my set, because we're gonna write these in interval notation, I cannot include my points on my number line because it doesn't have the equal sign there. So my set notation for when the val uh, values are positive are in here. So my set notation will be negative two, two, five. So my x values are negative two to five. They don't include the endpoints because we don't have an equal. So the next one, I have x to the third power minus 9x is less than or equal to 0. And before I do anything, I want to factor. And I see a greatest common factor of an x. And then I would multiply by x squared minus 9, which is a perfect square binomial. So I need to break them apart. I have x, x plus 3, and x minus 3. Right. So this is my function in factored form that I'm looking at. Again, this is a polynomial, so my domain is all real numbers, but my x-intercepts, those are going to be the numbers on my number line, and I know x is 0, x is negative 3, and x is positive 3. So on my number line over here, I have negative 3, 0, and positive 3. So now I'll pick numbers in each of those regions. And a number less than negative 3, how about um, at x is negative 4? And I go back to my factored function. So this first value is negative 4, so that gives me a negative. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative, and negative 4 minus 3 is negative. So at negative 4, or in this region, I have all negatives. Between negative 3 and 0, let's choose 1. So at x equals 1, I am, and make that negative 1, I have a negative 1, so that's negative, Negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2, and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Two negatives make that region positive. My next region I have between 0 and 3, so let's pick x equals 2. That's a positive 2, so my first factor is a positive. 2 plus 3 is 5, that's positive, and 2 minus 3 is negative. So because I have one negative, this region will be negative. Now a number greater than 3, um, how about 4? So at x equals 4, I have my factor of an x is positive, positive 4. 4 plus 3 is 7, that's positive, and 4 minus 3 is negative positive 1. So this region is positive. Looking at the original sign. So
So I'm going back to this. This time I'm looking for numbers that are less than zero. And this graph will be, I'm looking for negative numbers. And also where it equals. Now all three of these points are x-intercepts, so they are on the x-axis, so I can include those in my set notation. So where is it negative? It is negative in this region and in this region. So looking for my solution set, I have the negative, or the numbers that are going from negative infinity to negative three, and I will include negative three, okay, so bracket, and I have another set, so we're gonna use the union symbol, and this set will be written as zero, and it's including zero to three, and it's including three. So here is my solution. On the next page, this time I have a rational function right in there. A little out of focus, it seems. So in my rational function, I need to identify the domain. And my domain is all real numbers except for where x is 1. So in my domain, x cannot equal 1. And at that point, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. For my x-intercept, I'm going to have the point x is negative 1. Okay. And that's it on my graph. So on my number line, put that in here, I have negative one and positive one. So I have three regions to test here. Um, just noting that at negative one, I have an x-intercept, so that is on our x-axis, and at positive one, I'm gonna have an open circle because this is actually a vertical asymptote. Okay, and that's gonna come into play when we write our set notation. So now I'm gonna pick numbers for x for each region. So my first number is, how about x is negative two? Now my function, x plus one over x minus one, I'm just writing that a little bit bigger, because I'm gonna plug in negative two for x, so negative two plus one is negative one. So this is a negative. And on bottom, I have negative two minus one, which is also a negative. So the two negatives together make it a positive. Between negative one and one, let's pick zero. So at zero, zero plus one is positive one, and zero minus one is negative one. So that region is a negative number and then a number bigger one than one, like three. Three plus one is four, that's positive. Three minus one is two, that's positive. So this is positive. Here I'm looking for numbers that are greater than, my y values are greater than zero. So greater than is positive. And I'm not gonna include any numbers that are on the number line. So um, it doesn't in, have an equal sign here, so it's just the positive values. Now positive values are numbers less than one, negative one and numbers greater than one. So here, less than negative one, I would write negative infinity to negative one and I have a union set with the number that's approaching one, so not equal to one, going to infinity. In example four, I'm looking for my domain first, 
So my domain includes all numbers except for x equals zero. So I have a vertical asymptote here. And then for my x-intercept, my numerators that equal zero are positive one and negative one. So x is positive one and x is negative one. So on my number line, I have a negative one, a zero, and a positive one. My x-intercepts are at negative one, and this is my vertical asymptote. So this is gonna be an open circle here. Now I'll find numbers for x in, in each region. So at x equals negative two, I'm plugging in negative two minus one is negative three. Negative two plus one is negative one, and that's over negative two, which is negative. Three negatives means this region is negative. Between negative one and zero, I'm gonna choose negative one half. So negative one half minus one is negative three halves, negative one half plus one is positive one half, and then negative one half on the bottom. The two negatives make it positive. This region is positive. How about at x equals positive one half? So at x equals positive one half, one half minus one is negative one half. One half plus one is positive three halves, and then positive one half on the bottom. This section is negative, and then I have a number bigger than one, like two. Two minus one is positive, two plus one is positive, and two is positive. All of those are positive. All right, so now I'm looking for numbers that are less than or equal to zero. So in this case, I'm looking for negative and it can equal zero. Okay, so that's important for my endpoints. My regions that I'm looking for, the negative values are here and here. So in my set notation, I have the numbers from negative infinity to one, and one is a x-intercept, and we'll include that. So negative infinity to one, including one. We never include a negative infinity because it's not a finite number. Then I have another set between zero and one. Now, even though it says it's equal to over here, I have a vertical asymptote and the graph will never cross or connect to the vertical asymptote. So at zero, zero is not part of our domain, so I'm not including the actual point of zero, just everything that's very, very close to it, and that goes to one. So I go from zero to one, and I include one. This last problem, um, notice I have my fractions, my rational functions on both sides of the inequality sign. So the first thing I need to do is send that function on the right to the other side. So I have five over x minus one, and I'm gonna subtract four over x plus two. Now I need to write this as a single fraction, one ratio, okay? So I need to put these um, denominators together into a common denominator. So in my common denominator, I'll have a factor of an x minus one and an x plus two. Now when I put these together in a common denominator, what I'm actually doing is multiplying x minus one by x plus two. 
And when I multiply that on the denominator, I also have to multiply that on the numerator. So that gives me 5x plus 10. I do the same thing for the other fraction. To get x plus 1 and x, min x minus 1 and x plus 2 on both of those factors on the denominator, I needed to multiply x plus 2 by x minus 1 on the top and bottom. Okay, so here gives me the two factors on bottom, and now I'm going to distribute. And I'm going to distribute here with negative 4, so I have minus 4x, and minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. And if I simplify that, I'm going to have 5x minus 4x is 1x, and 10 plus 4 is 14. So that is a factor by itself on top. On the denominator, I have an x minus 1 and an x plus 2. So my domain is all numbers except x equals 1. So x cannot equal 1 and x cannot equal negative 2. So this will give me my vertical asymptotes. <coughs> Now for my factors on the top, if I set this equal to zero, that gives my, me my x-intercepts. So my x-intercept is um, negative 14. So on my number line, I'm going to have x-intercepts at 1 and negative 2. So here's 1. Here's negative 2 and negative 14. And actually, at 1 and negative 2, those are open circles and vertical asymptotes. So our graph will not touch those. X-intercept at 14. So now we test our region. I pick numbers for each region. So the first one is less than negative 14. And this is what I'm putting those numbers into. That's my factored function. So number less than negative 14, so how about at x equals negative 15? Negative 15 plus 14 is a negative 1. And on the bottom, I have negative 15 minus 1 is negative 16 and then negative 13 for plus 2. So this is negative in this region. A number between negative 14 and negative 2, let's try negative 5. So at x is negative 5. If I add 14, I get a positive number. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So this region is positive. Between negative 2 and 1, I'll pick 0. So at 0, plus 14 is positive 14. 0 minus 1 is negative, and 0 plus 2 is positive. This region is negative. And now I have a number bigger than 1. Let's try... I plug in 3 plus 14 is positive 17. 3 minus 1 is 2, and oops, and that's positive. And 3 plus 2 is positive 5. This region is positive. Now, if I go back and look at my original sign, this would say less than or equal to 0 since I moved this over. So I'm looking for numbers that are less than 0 or equal to. So these are negative. So I want negative numbers, and it can equal my zeros. All right. So those values are here and here. 
So for my set notation, I have the numbers from negative 14 to negative infinity. Negative infinity comes first, and it goes to negative 14, which is an x-intercept, and we'll include that. Include it with a bracket. And my other set is between negative 2 and 1. Even though it says equal here, these are asymptotes, so it will never equal those values because that's not part of our domain over here. So then I have between negative 2 and 1, but not including negative 2 and 1.